All right, day 10, starting in now. Day two, do we need to run a program? Uh, okay. Oh, okay. Kind of bug. Yeah, it starts with one. Ah, uh, okay. go down.
Let's see. C F C H Okay. Uh it took me a little while to do both parts, but I guess it also took other people a while, because it's placed okay. Huh, so what's going on here? Um so we have this very simple program. It's not really even a program because there's only two instructions, which are add and no up. And we just, it's mostly a question of getting the timing correct. Uh, uh, oh yeah, let me fix that. Um, so. Every time we need to increment t stuff, so let's just do it here. Uh, this is supposed to be what t minus one, one. So that's supposed to print the 180 and F. I'm not going to implement a thing that like converts this to an actual string. I've got to just do that by hand. Uh, is this acceptable? That gross. This is nicer. Yeah, I mean, I think this is kind of. Okay, um, yeah, so we have this program that like basically just alters the value of x, and then we also have this clock that's sort of counting up. And I guess the tricky part is really not like executing the program, it's like keeping track of exactly when the clock is ticking. Uh, so in part one, uh, we want to just grab the value at like these particular cycles, these ones, and add together the value of x times the value of the cycle. And so I guess just the thing to be careful about is that the increment does not actually happen until like this add takes two cycles and the increment does not like you increment the time before you increment x. Uh, and then no op, you just increment the time. You don't do anything with this. Uh, and also, you know, something interesting might happen like here. So you need to increment the cycles one by one so that you actually like check if this is an introduced cycle. Uh, so that was part one. Um, and I had some kind of bug, I think, oh yeah, I didn't notice that x started at 1, because, I don't know, I just assumed it would start at 0, but, I mean, it says right here. Uh, yeah, so that was part 1. And then in part 2, uh, you have to imagine that you're, like, drawing to a screen. So I guess you just, you draw the first row, and you do that, like, one pixel per cycle, then the second row, and so on. Um, and so how do you decide if you draw a uh, dot or a hash? Well, the idea 
I mean, it says something a little bit more confusing, but I feel like this is more clear. That you draw a hash if it's uh, within one of the current cycle mod 40. The way they phrase that here is that the x is like a sprite of three pixels wide, and you're, if the sprite overlaps the current column that you're drawing in. I mean, whatever. It's the same, same thing. So it's, uh, you know, full, black, whatever, hash, if x is within one of t mod 40, and otherwise it's um, empty. You could use dot, but I think uh, it's sort of actually easier to read the letters if you use a space instead of a dot. Let's just try it and see. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You can also read that, but I think it's nicer. Advent of Code has used this, like, output format before, and my experience is that it's nicer if the so that are not on are just blank, so that they're not sort of cluttering up the screen. Um, yeah, so then in part two, you actually need to like read the output like, as you know English letters. I mean, you could implement some code to extract the letter uh, you know, from this grid, and I'm sure someone's going to. But obviously, during the contest, you would just want to use your eyes <laughs> to read it out. It's going to be faster than any code. Um, just got to make sure you don't make a mistake. Z, F, C, H, J, A, B. And that was it for today. Uh, yeah, see you tomorrow.